Welcome to my video on how to master work problems. This is just part one of several videos I will probably end up having to do for this. To slice or not to slice? That is the question. Uh, the, par or the penultimate problem that students generally have within um, a Calculus 2 course is that they have some type of object hanging from a building and this object has some type of weight to it. It could be a certain amount of weight per feet or, or per foot or a certain amount of weight per meter, whatever it may be. And often I've seen instructors who say, well, we're going to slice this up and it's, it's actually a correct method. They slice this up. They just take this little slice out of here and they move it all the way up to the top. And you notice we're now, now that I've done this correctly, we're now missing part of the chain. That chain has been moved all the way up to the top. It actually exists inside of that little uh, square, that little slice I've done. The question is, how much work was required to lift that slice all the way up there? I mean, there's a certain amount of force that's applied over a certain distance to get this slice to go all the way up there. It originally started down here. What we did is just consider it and move it all the way up. But what is that work? And a couple things we're going to need to remember in this entire section is that work to move a slice, and that's, I'll just use W sub I to denote the ith slice, the amount of work to move that ith slice, is equal to the force to kind of maintain a hold on the ith slice times the distance we're moving the ith, ith slice. So if the world was all fair and good and kind, we would know how much force or basically how much weight this object has, this this little section of the chain right here, we would be able to find out it might be, let's say it was two pounds per, per foot, and let's say this is a one foot section, so we know that this section, it weighs two pounds, okay, so that's the force, and then we want to move that through a distance, and the distance is just this distance right here. That's a basic idea with moving things. And this is a great idea uh, to kind of adhere to when you're moving a slice. You slice it and you take the slice and you move it up. Now this is not so easy to do when you have, uh, let's say, a, a bucket at the bottom. If you have a bucket at the bottom, there's no slice to consider because you can't slice up all these little lines. Of course you could do that for the chain that's holding the bucket, but for the bucket itself, there's a little difference. So most of the time you're going to slice. You're going to follow the two slice rule. However, when an object is at the bottom, we're going to take that as a separate problem and not slice it, but instead scoot. Okay, so uh, I'll write that down here. And therefore, uh, like I said, just wrote, wrote down there, when an object is at the bottom or linked to the bottom, uh, we'll just go ahead and scoot it. Now there is a huge difference between having a length of chain or rope or cable or whatever it is that has a uniform density throughout because with a uniform density when I take a slice like I take in here when I take whoops when I take this slice right here the weight of this slice is the same as the weight of the next slice so it doesn't when I talk oh what's the force of the ith slice it's always the same the only chain thing that changes is the distance but uh, when I'm talking an object down here whether it be a bucket or a body or something like that uh, you, you can't really slice that up. You really compress it to a point and say, okay, how much force is required to move it just a little bit at a time? And the scooting things, although some mathematicians may disagree with me, I think scooting a single object is a little bit, makes more intuitive sense in the long run than it does to slice an object. Uh, slicing uh, a cable or rope is fine, but slicing an object that just sits at the bottom or even part way into a rope is not so fine. It doesn't make sense at all. Now a couple things before we really venture into um, some of these problems. I just want to remind you of some of our more famous formulas. Again, uh, we have here the work to move the ith slice is just force that it is to maintain the ith slice at a certain level uh, times the distance. Work is force times distance. And one other formula that will really help is force is mass of that ith slice times the acceleration. Generally, the acceleration we're going to pretend doesn't change. And finally, this is extremely helpful in liquid problems to know that the mass is going to be density 
times volume. And I, I suppose you could say the density of the ith slice of some of these cruel enough to give you uh, liquid that's changing densities as you're uh, moving up through the liquid, and that's more realistic, um, even when you're talking heated uh, um, liquids or something like that, they change densities as you as you move through the liquid. But we'll assume that liquids that we're going to be lifting out of a tank or something like that will have a constant de density. But the techniques that we're going to use can be applied for all different kinds of liquids that have variable densities and masses that um, or objects have variable masses. So we'll start with a simple and the basic, the most basic uh, work problem other than uh, those that just say well, you scoot an object 50 feet and it weighs, you know, you apply a 200 pound pressure or something like that. that that's too easy. We're going to do something a little more difficult and it's going to mimic the example I had kind of written up a moment ago. Let me draw a picture of this situation. Okay, so this is my generic picture. You have a greenhouse, you have somebody standing on top hanging a chain down. It's a 50 foot chain. It weighs 150 pounds total and it's hanging over the edge of a building uh, it says the edge of a building of a very tall building. It should actually just say the edge of a very tall building. So let me cross this out. And the reason why we have to have a, a very tall building is because the chain's only 50 feet. If the building is less than 50 feet um, in height, then part of the chain is on the ground and we have a little extra information we have to work with there. But for now, let's keep it simple. I just want to know the work required to pull the chain to the top. First of all, we're going to make an assumption here, nobody said it, but we'll make it, that this chain is constant, has, uh, the weight is constant throughout. In other words, uh, that you can uh, distribute, it has the same unit weight on the chain. So we know that the weight of the chain, well, it's 150 pounds, but that's, uh, I always want to put an S on there, 150 pounds, but that's per 50 feet. And of course, that would be 3 pounds per foot. to slice or not to slice. Well, this is a very long object. It's distributed, its weight is distributed throughout every little piece of the object here. So a slice is very nice to do. Now, I'm not gonna do it the way most textbooks do it because I hate the way most textbooks do it. I'm gonna set up my axes in what I think is a proper manner, the natural way to think of axes here. I'll go ahead and do my x-axis right here and my y-axis right here. And I know that the person is standing uh, at the top of the chain, which is, uh, what is it, 50 feet up? And the bottom chain, I'll just say, is down here. So notice I'm not really concerned about the top of the building. I'm concerned about the top of the chain. The bottom of the chain is just at the ground level. And I'm going to take a representative slice. Right there looks good to me. That's an ith slice. It has an actual width to it. If we're really going to talk about um, a width here, we're just doing a, a finite a number of slices, so that will have a, a slice a size to it. And let me go ahead and mimic that slice over on our axes, so you can see it over here. If you take a representative point within that slice, well, let's see. If this is the y-axis, I guess the representative point, which I'll just shade in here and I'll put an arrow at, is called y sub i. Now, technically. Most mathematicians would write y sub i star, they put a little star up here because uh, they would say that that's a random um, point in that delta neighborhood. Speaking of delta neighborhood, the width of this would be delta y. So it has a slight width, right, from the bottom to the top of it, there's a slight change in y. So my question, again, is to find the work to lift that slice. Once I know the work to, to lift that single little slice, that slice was randomly selected. So I will have the idea of how to sum up all the works for all the slices. So here we go. The work to lift that particular slice is equal to the force that it takes to hold that slice in my hand times the distance I'm going to be moving that slice. Now before I tell you what this equals, I'm going to hop back to, re to recall kind of what the formulas are. Recall that, again, work is force times distance. Force is mass times acceleration. Now when you're dealing with um, US or, or yeah, 
U.S. units, and I think um, Bolivia and the, there's another country. I can, can never remember. Um, there's another country that uses it as well. Um, but there's only three countries in the world that use p pounds and feet and stuff like that. When you're dealing with uh, the U.S. units, you don't really worry about this mass idea because our weight system, like, for example, if somebody weighs 180 pounds, that is actually their mass times acceleration. That is their force they're applying on a space. So uh, in this, you only have to really reach for this form, formula when you're dealing with uh, SI units. Okay. So in other words, the rest, System International, the rest of the world, uh, when you're in meters, basically or centimeters or whatever it is, you have to worry about mass times acceleration. But in the US, again, force is just in pounds. So let me hop back to our problem. So I just told you force is in pounds. And here, the ith slice weighs three pounds per foot, right? But this is not the correct unit for force force is pounds only. So we have to multiply it by some number of feet. Well, let's see. If I'm looking at this slice of chain right here, it has a certain length to it, right? The length is delta y. And in fact, let's say that, just for giggles, it starts, I, I start my cut at 24 feet and end it at 25 feet. So it's a one foot cut. So my delta y is one foot. Or maybe I started my cut at the lower end at 24 and the higher end at 30 feet. That's a six foot delta Y or a six foot cut. In any case, whatever we decide delta Y to be, it's delta Y feet is the actual cut size, delta Y feet. So you see the words feet cancel. So we are actually in a force right there. That is force, three times delta Y pounds. Now the distance that we're gonna take this uh, point here is all the way up, or I'm sorry, the slice, is all the way up to the top. Well, let's think about this. If the total distance was 50, then this distance must be almost 50, but we're shy a little bit. So 50 minus y sub i star is likely to be the distance. And if you think about it, uh, let's just pretend the sample point in there is at a height of 20 then we still have 30 feet to go. You know that naturally, 50 minus 20 is 30, so this definitely works out. So this will be 50 minus y sub i star. That's the work, force times distance. By the way, that distance is in um, feet, right? So this is going to be our work. Let me clean this up quite a bit because uh, it looks kind of messy from where I'm sitting. So this is equal to, I know this is bad use of, of board here, but we're going to do it anyway. I am going to negate these units, feet over feet, negate. And I have 3 times delta y times 50 minus y sub i star. And then the units are pounds times feet, or we usually call them foot pounds. And that should be be the indication that you're doing something right because the unit for work in the United States is foot pounds. So there you are, have it. That is how much work is required to lift that ith slice. Now let's worry about all the other slices. Well we could sit here and sum these all up over a finite number of slices. We could slice it up a hundred times I suppose and sum this up from i equals uh, 1 to 100. Or we could do what is a Riemann sum, right? As long as we let our slices go infinitesimally thin, we are basically approaching an integral. In this integral, we're going to evaluate from 0 to a height of 50. And I'm just going to copy the rest of this. 3, usually we write our delta y's at the end, so I'll write that at the end, times 50 minus y, and then delta y when you are doing, dealing with the infinitesimally small that capital delta turns to a little d. It's a differential. This would describe the amount of work that it would take to pull this entire chain up. It takes this ith slice, the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. It sums up the work for all of these slices.